What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over Lee code 69, square root of a number. So first we'll go over the input output, then we'll look at the approach, then I'll draw a diagram, and finally we'll look at the code and complexity. Okay, so the input is going to be a number, and the output is also going to be a number. If we have an input for say 4, that's simple, the square root is 2, we know that. But if we have a number which is not a perfect square, like say 17, we have to give the number which is closest to the square root, also a whole number, so it's going to be like 4.12, something like that. So we have to round it to 4. To calculate this, we're going to use binary search. And I'm going to link a, a URL in the description below to a top coder link, which talks about how powerful binary search really is and how we use it for a lot more things than just finding a number in a sorted list or something like that. So feel free to check it out, and then we'll look at the rest of the problem. We're going to be using binary search, but we know that the square root of x is definitely between 1 and x. So let's guess the square root and use binary search to help narrow down our search space efficiently to see what is the closest guess we can get to our square root of x. In binary search, there's two main things that we're working with. One is our limits. So we know that the square root of, let's say, x is going to be between 1 and x. So those are our limits. The lower limit is 1 and the upper limit is x. The other thing we work with in binary search is the midpoint. So the midpoint is actually our guess. So what we guess could be a potential solution. And we narrow down our guesses by narrowing down the search space until the limits, the lower and upper limits, converge. Now. If we had to find, let's say, the square root of 4, our midpoint could be 1 and 4. The midpoint is going to be 2, right? And 2 times 2 is 4, so that checks out. But what happens if the square root we need to find is, let's say, square root of 17? Then the first midpoint we take isn't going to be the best answer. Now, what should we do? We know that our midpoint is our guess, and if we find that our guess is not very accurate or we could do better, then what we're going to do is change our midpoint, which is our guess, and we change it by either increasing the guess or decreasing the guess. We can increase and decrease the guess as follows. To increase our guess, we increase the lower limit. So by increasing this, the midpoint is going to be higher. To decrease our guess, we're going to decrease the upper limit. So we're going to decrease the upper limit. What we do is we assign the lower limit and upper limit to either the midpoint minus one or midpoint plus one, because that's how we eliminate efficiently the search space of the square root of our original number. Now let's look at a diagram for a number like 17. Let's say we're trying to find the square root of 17. The actual square root is 4.1, something like that. So our output is supposed to be Four. We know that. Now, this is how we're going to use binary search. We take our limits, the 1 and the number that we're trying to find the square root of, in this case 17, and we get the midpoint. So the midpoint, 1 plus 17, 18, by 2 is 9. First, we see, hey, is 9 the square root of 17? How can we check? Simple. Just multiply 9 by itself and see if it's equal to the original number. No, it's not. And it's larger. So 9 times 9 is 81. It's larger. So what we have to do is decrease our guess. How do we do that? We do that by taking our limit and our upper limit and reducing that. So we're going to say 9 minus 1 is our new upper limit. So next, we take 1 and 8, and we use 1 again from the top because we're not changing the lower limit in this iteration. So 1 and 8 have a midpoint of 4, and then we see, hey, is 4 times 4 the square root of 17? Well, not exactly, but it is smaller than 17, so we have a good estimate. Now, it's pretty close, so we take that as one of the potential answers. Then, we know that since 4 is actually less than the actual perfect square root, we're going to increase our limit by a little bit. So what we do is take this guess and swap our lower limit with m plus 1, in this case 5, so 5 and 8 have a midpoint of 6. 6 times 6 is actually larger, so we decrease our guess. So 6 is too much. Then we do 5 
for the upper limit. We swap out the upper limit because the guess is too high. And then we see that, okay, five is the upper limit and five is also the lower limit. So we have one more iteration. The midpoint is gonna be five. And after we see five times five is greater than 17, we say that, okay, we can't do better than four. Four is the best potential answer we've got. So that's how we're going to return our final answer. The diagram I just drew for you actually pertains to the simple version of the code where we don't have to take care of overflows. So in this version, we just have m times m to check the square root. Otherwise, we do m times m to see if it's larger than x. Otherwise, m times n if it's less than x. It's simple and we don't really have to worry about large numbers which are going out of bounds or something like that. So if we want to take care of the overflow or out of bounds or really large number cases, what we actually have to do is tweak this a little bit to say m is greater than or equal to x by m and m is less than or equal to x by m. Everything else pretty much stays the same. But if we're going with this version, then the iteration, the diagram which I drew earlier, is going to be a little different and it's going to map out. But the previous diagram is just for understanding how we're changing the limits. Don't get so caught up on how we take care of the overflow case. The actual iterated values are going to be different between this version and this version. But I recommend learning it with this to understand conceptually, understand with the diagram, and then it'll be easy to understand how this overflow case is being taken care of. Now for the time and space complexity, we have O of log N for the time complexity because we're eliminating half the search space each time. And for space, it's going to be O of constant or O of one because we're not using any additional space or anything like that. So that's how you solve week code 69. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.